So anytime I'm asked to find the eigenvalues, I'm thinking back to determinant of a minus lambda i. So I'm looking for the determinant of when we subtract off that lambda i, it means we're subtracting lambda from the primary diagonal. So we're looking for the determinant of 1 minus lambda, negative 4, 1, and 1 minus lambda. We're going to set that equal to 0. Finding the determinant, I've got which minus which. So I'm looking at 1 minus lambda times another 1 minus lambda minus negative 4 times 1. If I distribute this out, I've got lambda squared minus 2 lambda plus 1 plus 4. So that's lambda squared minus 2 lambda plus 5. Now I was mean and I did not give us something that factors. So if it doesn't factor, we have to use quadratic formula. I am looking at lambda is equal to negative b, so a negative negative 2, we make that 2, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, all over 2a. If I clean that up a little bit, inside the square root, I've now got 4 minus 20. So it's a negative 16 inside my square root. That is two eigenvalues because we've got a lambda equals 1 plus 2i and another lambda 1 minus 2i. So the next part of this is to figure out what our eigenvectors are. If you have complex eigenvalues, we are always going to have complex eigenvectors. And they should come in complex conjugate pairs. To solve for our eigenvectors, the equation that we're headed back to is that the matrix A minus lambda i times our eigenvector x needs to be equal to the zero matrix. Um, so a minus lambda i for us, that means I'm going to have one. Let's look at this. Let's look at lambda one first. So I'm going to have one minus one plus two i. negative 4, 1, and 1 minus 1 plus 2i. And that times our vector xy or x1, x2, if you like subscripts, has to be equal to the zero vector. Cleaning this up, distributing that minus sign in, 1 minus 1, well, those are gone. So now I've got um, negative 2i, negative 4, 1, and negative 2i. Multiplying that by my xy vector to get the zero vector. If we multiply this out, I've got negative 2i minus, oh, negative 2i x minus 4y is equal to zero. And on the bottom row, I end up with x minus 2i y is equal to zero. Now, I've mentioned before that when we write out these two equations for our eigenvectors, they should give us the same information. So if I'm looking at these two, I should be able to multiply the bottom row by something and turn it into the top row, and I can. If I multiply through by negative 2i, the bottom row will turn into the top row. So I'll just work with the top row for right now. Or actually, let's just work with the bottom row because the numbers are smaller. So work with the bottom row. So on the bottom row, if I set y equal to t, or my free variable, then I can write my vector xy as 
Well, that means x would equal 2i times t. And y would just be equal to 1t. And again, if I choose a specific eigenvector, I can just choose 1 for t. So 2i1 would be the eigenvector associated with this eigenvalue. So I'll just expand this bubble here and write that my x1 was 2i1t. Okay. And let's repeat, but with our other eigenvalue. So if I come through with my other eigenvalue, that's going to be a minus and a minus. We're just going to chase that through. So now I'll have a minus here and a minus here. Just going to make that a plus 2i and a plus 2i. So plus 2i and a plus 2i. So just to check that they really did give us the same information, in that bottom row, if I multiply by 2i, I will get back what we started with on the top. So we're good. So if I let y be equal to my free variable t, then x would be, I'll have, if I move that over, I'll have negative 2i t 